Welcome to this week's podcast episode. I brought on Claire Brown. Claire, welcome. Hello, Heather Hacks. How are you? Good. Give the listeners a little background. Where do you live and what do you do? So I live in Little Rock, Arkansas. I've been an executive real estate broker for 17 years now. I had a huge breakthrough in life last December, which sparked a ton of growth. And now I have a book coming out. I've launched a podcast. I have social media groups of over 6,000 women. And I am a power mom which means I am a mom of two amazing children and it's only the three of us. Well, and that's what I really want to hone on today is, is all these things you've created from, um, well, you found the silver lining from ending a relationship, but if you want to talk about this whole power women movement, what does that even mean? Right. So, um, it really started Heather when I um, started the, had my heart broken last December. Um, and then I poured into my journal, which I I typically do every day, but this was on a much higher level that I had never experienced. Words just flowed and they came and I started writing the book. Um, and then I realized and got to the chapter where you are who you surround yourself with. And it really showed up in my life that I've had a lack of powerful women within my life to support me on a daily basis in many ways, personally, professionally, whatever it may be. And so I started a private Facebook group and told a couple of my girlfriends, a few acquaintances and said, listen, I'm going to start this so that we can have mom night outs, um, carpool, and maybe one of you will find me a date in this town eventually. And so my girlfriend said, oh my God, does that mean I get to cuss on Facebook? And I'm like, yes. You can totally do that. And so immediately it was to my surprise that within three weeks, there were 1500 members in the group. And these are all women of business. These women build one another, they hire one another, they publish their needs, wants, and desires within the business community and the group, the group feeds them, which is truly how we rise. What I want to ask you though, is so some people, when they have that, desire, right? You had that ache for powerful women to be around you, but rather than just sit and sulk in that, I wish I had this, what drove you to, I'm going to create it? Well, it's all about action. You know, there's so many times we all have wonderful ideas. We realize the lack in our life and then we just don't take action on how to make that solution oriented. I've always been a driver. That's always been my personality. It shows up in my real estate business a great deal. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not just a, a power mom, a single mom. I am the sole provider for me and my children. I don't receive support of any other type. And so I've always been one to take action and to be a driver. So now that you've created this community of 6,000 power women, what are you right. doing with that? So I started interviewing a woman of influence every week within the group and taking apart her journey so that we can just learn from all of her tools of of wisdom. And that has now turned into the national podcast. And then the group also is a feeder for uh, not just my real estate business, but for business coaching, how to pour into these women at a much higher level than we already are. And so now I am uh, a business coach coach and have other women and we're expanding this platform into every city in this country and to provide business coaching for women. What I love most about what you've done is you've created this community, this sisterhood, yeah. right? I think yes. men are so good about creating brotherhood and but yeah. women in my experience, but I think it's also a story I've created, women tend to be jealous kind of bitchy, not supportive. So how have have you made that happen? Well, um, I describe it, I I made rules for the group immediately. And if someone doesn't mind their manners, they get kicked out. It's just that simple. Um, You know, I'm definitely a Southern girl and, you know, manners are a big deal down here. And if you can't mind your manners on social media and align with the culture that this company has created, then you're eliminated. It's very simple. So what are, what are the guidelines for the, the community? Right. So you cannot sell or solicit anything in the group 
Um, this is not one of those garage sale sites. This is not your typical mommy group of I've got all these clothes for my kids, somebody come buy them. And so there are no sales. There is the um, always come from contribution pouring into others um, and if it's not positive then it's eliminated and so complaining is a garbage magnet and so when one starts to complain everybody starts to complain it's kind of like a woman that shares the baby birthing story then you hear everybody's birthing story in the room you know and so no complaining um, no rants no um, putting of others down and again if you do that you're eliminated and so are your comments and then the third is to be bold. Don't let any limiting beliefs get in your way of anything, of your potential, your children's potential, of another's potential, and how you can aid in that. So then with this group of women, are they all in your area or are they national? Right. So there are actually three groups. There's Little Rock Power Women, and then there's Little Rock Power Moms, and then there's also Power Women of Real Estate. And the Power Women of Real Estate group is international, actually. I've interviewed women that are in other countries and things of that nature so that we can learn from her vision and tools. And then the local groups total uh, 4,000 in membership. What are you finding to be the common drivers with all of these women? Well, what I have found is women can far exceed their expectations. They just don't ask for the opportunity. They will sit back. Um, instead of creating that opportunity within their own lives, uh, they, they just don't feel that they can ask for that. They are afraid of being offensive or overbearing or whatever it may be. And the thing is, is that if you use your femininity and your soft voice uh, to go and ask for the opportunity, okay. it typically will be given. It doesn't mean that we have to be this hard, strong, power woman that just goes in like a bull in a china shop. Maintain your femininity in everything you do because that is where your strength is. But you must always ask. I'm finding that women now in these groups are finally asking for the opportunity. They're pouring into the group and they're saying, this is what I want. Who can help me achieve that? That's awesome. And I 100% agree with the femininity. I've done other podcast episodes all about embracing the feminine because I feel so many women have the whole front that Miss Independent, we don't need a man. We, we've taken on this masculine exterior, which isn't us. Right. No, not at all. You know, and if a man uh, wanted to uh, be with a partner that's loud and boisterous and demanding, um, then he'd be with a man. He wouldn't be with a woman. So you really must embrace your femininity and be comfortable within it. Right. And another important point that you said is that you have to ask and somebody, another woman actually at, um, hit me up this morning and she, she's interested in starting a po podcast. She's not really quite sure where to begin. So we're going to have a conversation, but then she said, how do you, how do you even get people on? And it, right. you want to hear my most uh, simple answer? Yeah. I just ask. That's and yes, it. I've only been turned down three times. Only three people said, no, I don't think that's for me. And I've yeah. had people bust out of their comfort zone that maybe this wasn't really their thing, but they were willing to do it to share their story, their insight. Right. So yeah, you don't know till you ask. You don't know. The worst you could do is ask and be told no. And how that's not painful to me. It's not. I'm no, I don't have a fear of offending someone or coming across the wrong way. I think you have to be comfortable within self, embrace the femininity, and then ask. Another thing you brought up with me is people that, and I'm all about getting people outside of their comfort zone. We've, I believe this society has created this boring box that most people right. live in, the four walls of comfort. But yeah. you had a phenomenal quote about that. Yeah, I, I believe that comfort screams mediocrity, um, you know, and how good and how big do you want to be? And so you must evaluate every year to yourself and say, okay, what's going to push me? And because your business grows to the extent that you do. And so what's going to push you personally? What's going to push you in business? Because that's how change occurs. That's how greatness occurs. And that gets you out of that mediocrity. For you, your experience, and when you're feeling comfortable, what do you do to, all right, what's my next level? 
Right. Absolutely. I mean, I've looked at my, my platform within this past year. I've leveraged a ton of things. You know, I have an editor for the podcast. They publish it for me. All I do is have the ability to just chat with other amazing women across the world. And then with my book, it's with an editor. It's with a publishing company. It's not for me to have my hand in all the time. You leverage those opportunities and then you say to yourself, okay, what else can I now put on my plate to fill that void of time? that's going to push me so that I am not stuck in comfort and mediocrity. What advice do you give to someone that says, wow, I mean, I would love to write a book or I actually have met a woman who has written a book, but scared to death to publish. So what do you say to those people that have these ideas, maybe to start a business, write a book, launch a podcast, but they're like, "Eh, I don't know. Right. So, you know, that obviously brings them pleasure and joy to to do those things. And so what is the pain that's holding you back? How do you get rid of that? Let it go. And then how painful would it be to not share all that you have with so many others, not just self? And that's actually one one question I asked myself before I quit corporate, because I, I was scared. There were so many unknowns, so many uncertainties. But the question I asked myself was, What is the worst case scenario? That's it. How deep is the pain? What does that look like? Well, so then how do you do that for yourself? Is it journaling? Is it via meditation? How do you? Yeah, it's journaling daily. It's, It's making sure that I continue to read and pour into self. And then how do I show up? in in my world because of that um, has been very clear. Obviously, writing a book started with a journaling. And so journaling daily is therapeutic for me. Um, Staying in my prayer life, staying in alignment with my faith is also huge for me, Um, especially when you live a life in the singlehood of integrity. Let me point that out. And then um, to remain in your faith. Well, I have a question for you then. Behind this movement of power women, does that mean hustle and grind to get these things? What does that, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, I think that women are hustling and grinding more than every every um, ever before. However, I think that uh, the emphasis on self-care is huge. And women are finally realizing that, you know, the the dirty word in my mind is balance. And that looks different to everyone. Um, And some may look at my world and say, how do you balance? How do you juggle it all? And it's not that I do. Um, it, it, It is a daily intention. And I know times that I have my children, my focus is on them 100%. When I don't have my children, I can have late night baths. I can sleep in a little bit more. I can schedule other things around the house. And so you have to have intention with your time in order to self-care so that you can have the balance that is right for your world. Well, I think what, so the Gary V's of the world and these very high performance, high achievers, they're all about, you have to hustle and grind 24 hours a day to get ahead. Yeah. And I very much come from the space of if you are in alignment or as you say, kind of balance, if you, if you are, you have those intentions then things naturally flow towards you. It's not about that hustle and grind and forcing. Talent attracts talent. That's what I know for sure. And so the more you grow, the more talented you become in your space, other talent will follow. Other talent will come too. And so the idea of always grinding, um, that word grinding, it just sounds so harsh to me. Um, You know, I prefer to look at it as following a passion and whatever it takes to, to complete that passion, then that's what your world looks like. That's on point. hundred percent. Love it. Yeah. Yeah. Love this power women movement. And then I want to ask, what is your book all about? So my book, obviously I shared that it started out as a, as a heartbreak. I believe we have uh, breaks in life. We can have heartbreaks. We have breakdowns and then we have breakthroughs, whether it's the death of a child, a death of a family member or a friend, um, a romantic heartbreak, a disappointment with a job that, that breaks you, whatever it is, you have a heartbreak and then you have a breakdown and then a breakthrough. So 
I did get my heart broke romantically and then had a breakdown the way we all tend to do in that manner and then had huge breakthroughs with the writing and the journaling. And so the book is titled Power Mom Dating from the Carpool Line. I had never dated until three and a half years ago when I entered the singlehood and then I'm thrown into a technology world with it on top of that. So outlining the standards that women should implement in their dating lives according to the single mom. That's the book with all the stories that go along with it. Do you know, actually years ago, one of my girlfriends suggested, Heather, why don't you should be keeping a journal and one day write a dating book. And part of me <laughs> kind of wishes I had, because now that I'm 33, trust me, I've had decade plus of dating. There's some yeah. little stories out there. Oh, but, for sure. Yeah. Well, I would love to wrap up this podcast interview with some rapid fire questions for you. Okay. Hit me. Uh, the first one I have for you is what is a quote or motto that you live by? What you focus on expands. And so when I focus on my children, my joy with them completely takes over. Uh, when I focus on my business, the productivity that comes from that, the business that comes from that is huge. Uh, when I get away from that, uh, I'm less productive. I have less income. Um, and then, you know, the other thing that I would say that I live by is prune back the unfruitful branches of your vine so that you can be more fruitful for him. And so that's just eliminating persons, distractions, relationships, habits, thoughts, Everything that's unfruitful for you in your life, it needs to be pruned back so that you can be more fruitful for God. That must be a Southernism. Yeah, girl. <laughs> well, it's actually John chapter 15, if you okay. want to get down to brass tacks. But I mean, we are in the Bible Belt, and I'm a good Southern girl. Awesome. What is a book that you're currently reading or highly recommend? Yeah, so I love anything by John Wooden. Uh, Coach Wooden was an amazing man that gave extreme leadership guidelines that still run true. And I, I just can't get enough of John Wooden. Uh, the other thing that I'm in the middle of is Mother Brene Brown and her Dare to Lead book. So I'm really enjoying that right now. I actually, I read her Brave, Braving the Wilderness uh, yeah. last summer and then her Dare to Lead is in my to-do. There you go. All right. So I, um, two more questions. What advice would you give to your younger self? Do not fear. Do not fear. You're capable of so much more than you can imagine. You're going to see that show up in your life. So hold on tight. All right. Final question. Who inspires you? Wow. That's huge. Um, you know, doing interviews with women and things like that. Other women, they can, just the conversations I have inspire me. The stories that I hear inspire me daily. I have uh, people in my world who question me, hold me accountable, and that inspires me and helps me grow. Awesome. Claire, thank you so much for joining me today and sharing your story and um, to powerful women. Yes. Thank you so much for having me, Heather. So I hope you'll be able to uh, listen in and join the podcast of Power Women, all one word. And uh, then the book will be out this spring. Awesome.